JWP in the house today. We have spotlights on us. Don't, 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 don't trip because, hey, the power is gone. <laughs> there was a storm. So got this nice spotlight on me, right, Tracy? Hey, nothing stops the show. That's right. That's right. We even got music, so we're good. Yeah, we got it. Welcome to eavesdroppers. Welcome to this fifth EP. I believe it is. And it's four o'clock here in Liberia and it's 12 o'clock in North Carolina. So I'm having a hard time hearing you. I think the music's still on. And, 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 and there you go. Oh, there I go. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? What's going on, Tracy? Not too much. Can we turn the music <laughs> off? Can you? Can you hear me, Tracy? I can hear the music louder than I can hear you, and I can hear you very softly. How about now? Who better? Yeah, I hear you great, and the music's still in the background. Say that again. Oh, music's gone. I can hear you great. Music, yeah, I stopped it. <laughs> so now, now we just went from we just went from a DJ situation to an escape room. <laughs> We're in an escape room now. Well, when... so this this thing has been working and all of a sudden it shut down right um but hey it doesn't stop it right it doesn't that's stop. right you could do a Blair witch thing and get get like if you have a you know, i'm gonna get a flashlight like, yeah, like flashlight i'm gonna get a flashlight but you know oh 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 i get it i see what happened i see what happened Yeah, we just, you know, again, you gotta have fun with it, right? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. There we go. There we are. Modern, modern technology. We love it. So other than other than like continuing to brave the uh the, the constant loss of of your energy. Oh hey Carl. Carl loss of, you of love your electricity. Music. How are things been going? the music i know i love the music too carl i know i know we jammed to that before before getting on here um i think i think it's gonna it's going to be great you know the fact that that it the the, the lights went out and then the music did something funky 
uh, I think it's going to be great today. I believe it's going to be great. I just have a feeling it is. I love that. How, how about you? I, well, uh, first of all, I love that because I think it's a great example of choosing the reality you want to experience. <laughs> hey, right? hey. Being proactive and it's like, how's this going to go? Well, I don't know. How do I want it to, to experience it? <laughs> it's going to be great. Right, because then you're setting your mind on it's great. So if your mind goes looking for all of the the ways to prove you right. So yeah. I, I, you know, I, I say that that because that has been a huge topic the last two weeks is with clients and 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 others. You yeah. know, is is the stories we tell. Wow. Right, wow. and how that frames our reality. Because I mean, we've talked about this before, but like reality. When people say, "Oh, get with reality," I'm like that 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 is a very objective thing. You know, like my, my objective view of my reality is mine. Your objective view of your reality is yours. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and mm -hmm. I think that, that, that to be able to choose the object we choose to focus on. Right. So if the object being, we frame our story to be the one we want to experience, yeah. then that's how the brain works. So people say, why am I always in a bad mood or why am I always you know, struggling to see the good side of things, or why is this other person always doing that? It's because they have these negative narratives mm -hmm. and whatever narrative is running through our cranium computer is mm -hmm. the one the, the computer is trying to reconcile with, right. right? So in other words, if I have this, if I'm like, oh, this is gonna be terrible, my brain is like, oh, find all of the ways in which this is going to be terrible yeah. and fixate yeah. on that because you need to be in yes. congruency with the story that's running through. Yes, yes, yes. And so people don't realize that it's like you dictate your experience or your reality based on your stories, mm -hmm. right? Based on the meaning you give things, based on, mm -hmm. and most of this stuff is going on unconsciously. So we're not stopping ourselves when it's like, oh, that doesn't feel good. You know, we're just like, we're thinking that the not feel good is because we're actually preparing ourselves for the reality that's not going to feel good when really it's based on our narrative. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as you were saying that, you know, somebody may say, but Walwyn may be lying to himself that it's going to be a great one. So he's not facing reality, right? And that's the difference is it's not, in this case, it's not about lying. I'm, I'm choosing it's a choice. I yeah. choose to know that this is going to be our best show of 2023. And there we go. It. See, and, 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 I'm, and I'm saying it and it's, and it's, and it's telling me it's, and it's testing you. It's <laughs> testing me, right? It's testing me. It's testing How me. You know much what I can you hold that and, truth? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold it. I'm going to hold it. I'm, you I'm hold not. It. You hold it like I, a candle because you're going to need one in a few minutes. <laughs> there you go. But I'm not going to choose to to for my environment mm -hmm. to dictate what I do. I, you know what's part I, of that environment? I will. I will be me. I will be Woolwin. I love right? it. You know, a part I will of that. Be part of that environment are the people who are telling you that you're not facing reality because what they're saying is you're not seeing the reality I'm choosing to make up in my head. Ooh. There you go. <laughs> Don't worry. You please ignore this thing. Ignore this thing. And we, we're, we're going, Tracy. We're going. As long as we can hear your voice and I'm not doing a soliloquy, we're all good. But hey, we're good. Know, we're that's good. That's the thing, though, is like, you know, I think that's where we've gotten hijacked by other people's reality time and time again, other people's expectations of us, other people's, you know, design of how we should be showing up. Is, mm -hmm. is even statements like that. Like you're not, you know, get with reality. What? I, right. I don't know. Sounds to me like your reality is not as much fun as my reality. So since we're all making up stories about our reality anyway, I'm going to make up one that actually subscribes to how I want to be. Yeah. 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 And we, and, and, we need to understand that because until we can bring it from the unconscious into the conscious awareness, yes. we can't choose that. Correct. Because we're Correct. already operating under the false premise of the conditioning we were raised in, which is the reality is what I tell you the reality is or what the world at large or what. But when really what's happening there is enough enough people are collectively getting together with the same narrative mm -hmm. and and strength in numbers and saying our narrative. And it's only because a bunch of them are choosing to line their narratives up, not that it's actually reality, because the more mm -hmm. people who join a, a certain 
focus of, of story and meaning bring energy and, and, and mo you know, momentum to that. It doesn't necessarily mean it's reality. It just means there's more people on that boat, right? There's yes. more people shouting that narrative. Yes. And so yes. that's the key piece is to say, we always have choice. Even if every single person is choosing a different narrative than you, yes. you still get to choose your narrative. Yes. And, you know, and, and you will like, let's just be, let's just be frank. You will yeah. always be navigating other people's narratives because mm. they will always give you a role in their play. They will, right. they, and many times if it's a negative one, it'll be a disempowered narrative. So they're like, you're my perpetrator. It's like, not unless I choose to, mm -hmm. right? Not today, Satan. Like I'm, yeah. I'm like, you know, if, if you want me to be your perpetrator, that's in your narrative. In my narrative, I'm choosing a different role. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and you, and, and you said it's challenging. It, it's in their play, right? Yeah. I, I, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm choosing not to get in your play. It's your play. I have my play, right? right. And, uh, but something, something else that I, I just want to model in this, in this moment is there are so many excuses we can give ourselves to be, to not to be great, mm. not to do the things that we have we've said we would do because um, there's electricity issue, there's 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 no AC on, so I'm sweating like nobody's business here. I, I what will people say? I don't care what the people would say. Um, what what will people have... say is the first thing that gets us off track and into someone else's narrative. Because now our brain is starting to focus on what will people say? What are their narratives? Let me listen out for what they're saying. And let me just choose to take the narrative that uh, that's the first sign yes. that you're starting to go into someone else's narrative. What will people right. say? So what you do is you get a light that runs on batteries that will flicker every now and then, but it shouldn't be flickering uh, <laughs> because it hasn't been flickering. The batteries isn't low, but you get a, 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 a battery. If you you have a power issue, you find the solution. You strategize to keep it going. You, you don't you know accept I, no. <laughs> yeah, don't and you know what I tell no. people too about that? Is your brain, again, is wired to find that solution when you accept and fully embrace that narrative. <laughs> So like if yes. you are, it will automatically happen because that's what your brain was made to do, yes. you know, is that as soon as you say my narrative is this is going to be the best show mm -hmm. as things come up, your brain is like, oh, it's going to be the best show. So what's the best solution for this issue that just came up to make this yes. the best show? Yes. Yeah. And Carl, Carl hits us with, you know, we become our best worst enemy. Oh, my God. That's great language. Yes. yes. When we start to. It can't, it can't happen. You know, there are so many times when you were writing a book. Let's let's go there. I, I don't I don't know this. We haven't spoken about this, but I'm going on a limb and I'm going to say that during your journey of writing the book, there were many stop U-turns uh, signs that came up as you were journeying towards writing this book. And you stopped and you thought for seconds going, gosh, um, this is a good place to stop and rest and take a break from this, or even I need to change. But you kept on going, you kept on going. And 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 I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna let you speak for, in, about this because I want to hear those moments and what you did, but I wanna just tell people that when you're birthing greatness. You really think this world wants you to birth it and, 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 and liberate people? Because that's what your greatness is. It's not selfish. It's never selfish. It's all about helping other people. Tracy writes a book to help other people. I'm here running a foundation and other things to, to, to help other people. But the key is when you're birthing greatness, if there's no persecution, if there are no, 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 no hindrances, we talked about it last week, if there are no problems in there, then you got to rethink this thing is not going to affect the world. It's not going to affect people. But when you start getting those huge stop signs, when you start getting those big old U-turn, uh, 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 U-turn, you're going, no, this is the time for me to push forward. Mm. 
Yeah, I love that. Well, and also to the way I see that is it's always we magnetize to us what is within us. So we're still stopping ourselves when those things are coming to stop us, right? Because what we're doing is we're magnetizing that thing that's coming to throw a monkey wrench in your decision to have a great day is because there's some narrative or something in you that magnetizes that. So, so that's where we get to stop and go, okay, this thing that I I could project it on the thing that's in my way. And even if we're doing it in a positive way, like we need challenge to grow. It's still projecting. It's still making it about the thing that shows up as the challenge when really it is just a mirror of something within us that we magnetized Mm. to show that there's still places to become aware that we're holding ourselves back. It's always ourselves. It does not matter what what manifests in quote unquote reality that we can say, no, no, it's that thing. I was going along, I was trucking along, and no, that thing tripped me, or that thing blocked me, or that thing. It is never that thing. That thing is just a physical representation of something in you. Mm. Mm. I mean, I could give you examples of that in the last couple of weeks, but you were asking a specific question about my book. Correct. Yes. So Uh my... In my experience with my book is I started out talking about what it was kind of like the what do people think, but it was more what do people do? So Mm. what does a good author do when they're writing a book, right? Like, and I'm, you know, I'm not a huge researcher anymore. I used to be early in life. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just like researching in, like, what am I thinking and feeling? And then I go looking specifically based on what that internal guidance tells me. But, sure. but, you know, so I'm like, all right, I, but I'm in my head about it. So I'm like, what, what do, you know, what do I do? And so I decide I'm going to get up early in the morning because I, my best time is actually early in the day, right? It's when I sure. think best and, and all that. So I get up and, and I, I'm like, all right, you know, and I found myself really, really procrastinating. I don't know how many times I sharpen a pencil because I still, I don't do the on the computer thing. I Are still you kidding me, Tracy? Because it's how I think. I think that way. Yeah. When I have ideas and then as I'm like developing those ideas, then I take it to computer. But when I'm first developing an idea, it's it's usually pencil. I prefer pencil just if anybody even cares. Pencil and paper. So I start, you know, doing that whole thing. And because I'm like, here I am. But I'm sharpening my pencil. I was like, why am I not just sitting down? Sharpening the pencil. And, and, and I'm like, I, I'm sharp with that pencil. Like, I'm sharpening these pencils away. Like, I'm sharpening them so much. Like, why am I procrastinating? Or I get, oh, now I need a cup of tea. And I'm like, oh, my, dang. And I and it suddenly dawned on me after I did this, after a couple of, you know, the first go around, really. I was like, you know why I'm procrastinating? is because this is not how I write. Wow. How I write is by inspiration. How I typically, like, so when people read my blog posts, you know how they typically start? I wake up at 2 a.m., something has grabbed my brain and I get up and I start scribbling things down. And then later I wake up that next morning, I start to unpack them a little bit. And then I start to write. It will, it will get me in the shower. It will get me on a run. It will get me at two o'clock in the morning. It'll get me at times where I haven't decided, Ooh, it's in my calendar. I'm going to sit down and write now. That is Mm -hmm. not when I produce. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what am Mm -hmm. I trying to do? This is totally going against how I typically get inspired. So I put a huge break on that and I started to then get out of my head and say, you know what? My intention is to write this book. It will take as long as it needs to take. I will allow spirit to guide me. I will allow my inspirations to guide me and I will use my intuition, which is my strongest superpower. And that's how it's going to happen. And I just decided kind of like you decide it's going to be our best it the is. most interesting show for sure. <laughs> Christmas. Yeah, exactly. It's Mardi Gras, Christmas, and any Mardi other Gras. light show type of event you want it to be. No, but no, you you you're right. Uh, I think Carl Carl put place a couple comments on there. Uh, he he talks about we can what 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 all day, but until we become doors, we stay stuck. He goes on to say, "I was a what if person. I live in my head." I lived in my head, but now I follow the Holy Spirit in my heart. And lastly, people love the idea of certain things, but fear keeps them from actually doing it. Yeah. I love that what if, because this is the rest of that complete thought. 
mm. is we can be what if people, but it's, it's which vein are we choosing the what if? Is it, what if this goes wrong? What if this falls apart? Mm. What if I'm abandoned? What if, Correct. say, what if this is the best show yet? What if yes. this is the, this is the moment I'm supposed to make the biggest impact? Yeah. What if, like, we can frame our what ifs in a positive or a negative way, or you know, there's also another option, it's neutral, which is kind mm. of what I, I was just talking about when it came to writing my book, is what mm. I recognized was my design. Gotcha. How am I designed to do my best work? And then it was like, you know what? I don't know how this is going to go. It's going to take mm. as long as it's going to take. I don't know what's going to inspire me. I don't know how these chapters are going to look. I don't know yeah. what's going to go where at this point. And mm -hmm. I'm going to be led. Like he said, spirit led him. Like I am of a, the same thing. It's like my, mm -hmm. my intuition will tell me which yeah. part of what I'm picking up I'm supposed to prioritize first, yeah. but I am not meant to come up with what comes through. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Whatever we call it. Cause I know there's people out there who, who subscribe to all sorts of different beliefs. Mm -hmm. We call it Holy Spirit. We call it our intuition. We call it instinct. We call it inspiration. We call it yeah. whatever. We call it universal flow. Whatever we call it, allowing it to co-create with us, or more specifically in the way I look at it, allowing myself to co-create with it, uh -huh. is what is going to help me be the most of the best service. Like you said, we're all here to help. We're all here to serve right. others. The, I don't know what that is. Mm. I, I can't, I might know that maybe this much. Mm -hmm. It's like that favorite quote I always mention. you know, man plans, God laughs. God yeah. knows so much more than I do. So, I mean, wh why am I trying to direct this traffic? Like, why don't I just say, okay, how, God, where do you want me to be? What, what draw in the inspiration I'm meant to have at the moment I'm meant to have it. And I will be, I will serve that. I will yes. get up. I will let it come out on paper. I will mold it. I will shape it. And I will continue to check in with you as to which yeah. direction that's supposed to go. And, and I will allow us to co-create. And that is how I know. And you know what? There's another piece to this. So I birthed that baby mm -hmm. two years ago now, the book. Yeah. And I made the decision because it just felt right not to do the typical launch. The whole marketing, new yeah. book, 99 cents on Amazon to get to the best sellers list X or best sellers list Y and look at me. And I mean, again, I don't mean it just for that because I think a lot of people do that because they want their book to be read because they want it to be read. I'm not saying it's all ego, but that just didn't feel like the right method of how to birth this, mm. this baby into the world. So it was kind of typical to me. It was a quiet birth at home, <laughs> home birth. Neighbors didn't know about it. <laughs> Just birthed that baby, shared it. You know, you take the baby to a couple friends' house. You're like, here's my new yeah. baby. You know, you yeah. share it internally in your circles. And I just kind of trusted that it wasn't really up to me. Now, some people saw that as stupid. Some people saw that again, mm -hmm. other, other stories. Why are play. You, this is a great book. Why aren't you put, why aren't you spending money to market it? Why aren't you? I'm like, and, and then when I come back and say, it just doesn't feel right. They're like, eh? But that's how you do it. That's how people see it. I mean, you're just going to spend all that time and money on a book that nobody sees. Like, well, that's not really the way I see it. So just the last. OK, so fast forward to now. That was two years ago that the book came out. People in the last two years have been, you know, giving me this feedback. Really? I mean, not always negatively, just questionably. Like, OK, that's kind of interesting. Well, what are you going to do? I don't know. I'm going to be directed by what feels best. I, I feel right. like, and, and, and again, people are just like, oh my God, get it to reality. You know, it'll be found. The right people will find mm -hmm. it. It will be as important wow. as it needs to be. And people are like, wow. opportunity's not going to knock on your door, sister. You're not going to get, this book's not going to get popularized by you just sitting on it. Get with reality. Right. So, and I'm just like, all I can do is what I feel, right? So wow. recently I started to build these different, you know, I've spent a lot of time in the last five years building networks, but very mm -hmm. intentional networks, okay. you know? And and one of my um, one of my colleagues, I, you know, in this impact collaborative group that, that we started, brilliant, brilliant woman, she says to me today, we we're on a call, uh, Cadence call with one of the clients we share. 
And she said to me, she goes, you know what you are? I was just talking about you in a in a, another group the other day. She said, you're like a fractional CXO matchmaker. And I'm like, because I was talking about how I how I know when clients need certain people, not just somebody who does X because they need X. A particular, mm-hmm. like I look at that's just the baseline criteria. Then I right. do this matchmaking thing where it's like 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 15 different things that need to line up if I'm going to introduce that person. Correct. But that means we need to oh, know wow. those right people, right? And so she's like, you match make at that level because even if it's not the thing I'm there to do, I'm there to do the the leadership and performance coaching. Mm-hmm. When I'm doing that coaching, I see the need for this, that, and the other thing. That's just not my Correct. lane. So All I right. can always suggest, well, I'm hearing that you need these other things and I have these people I can match make with you. And you know, mm. every single time people come back and go, it's like you, 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 you put me with my soulmate. Yeah, exactly. How the heck did you know that person is perfect in personality in everything? Like they're my soulmate in this business, you know, engagement. Yeah. And I'm just like, well, I guess it's just what I do, right? Well, I've been getting feedback from a variety of sources recently about the book and it's going gangbusters in certain circles right now. Mm. And people are coming Mm. back. And in fact, where it's getting Mm. the most traction Mm -hmm. is in the military world. So ex-military, current military higher ups are like, these concepts are really interesting. Wow. These, you know, and it's one particular partner of mine who is ex-military, but very, he he's, he's great. The way he makes match makes too is really wonderful. But he picked up my book was, was blown away in his words. And is like, this has to get in front of all these people. But Katrice, and me, what, Tracy, I, I don't want to, I am going to cut you off right there, but please, please hold that. And okay. I, I have to come in here and say, uh, the natural progression of something had you pushed the book the way it was, the way they, the status quo does it. Uh, the people who were supposed to engage with it would have been lost to them uh, because it was going to be all fluff. It's going to be fluffed and then people wouldn't see the meat right? They would, they would say just the different things about X. Could be, but here's here's what uh, I, I think was in UCLA. They, they built the buildings, uh, they had the structures on, and uh, it was the architecture school, and it was about the usage of, of space. It was, uh, I think it was regional planning. And what they did, they didn't put any pathways in there. All they did was put the buildings, and then the students made the paths and that were most the, intuitive after they, made the path, they went and they put the concrete on those paths meaning the way you're supposed to do your book is this way not it's not the way i'm going to let people read it and use it and then i'm now going to say to the military world hey i want to come and speak to you about this oh <gasps> tracy please come and speak and all of a sudden is an avalanche. So go ahead, sister. Go ahead. Oh my God. I am so glad you interrupted because that right there, what you did, that story you just told is absolutely, mm. it, it, it just consolidates exactly the point wow. I'm making. Wow. And, and I love that visual, by the way. I, I'm going to have to remember yeah. that one because that's a really powerful story. Yes. You know, and, and that's exactly what's happened because I want to be where I'm most valuable. Most of the time, what we what we do in business is we figure out like, okay, I realize I have value. And then we just assume the whole world needs it. I had a friend a number of years ago say, you know, your writing is of a particular caliber. Have you ever thought about writing for the common man? And what I heard was, can you dummy down your language so that more people hear you? <laughs> now, I'm not saying that's what he's saying. That's what I heard. Because I'm like, in order to do that, I, I, know, I know I'm probably offending people by saying this. In order to do that, I can only write the way I write. I can't, I would have to almost feed my book to someone, a ghostwriter to write for me because I can't write it any other way. I don't know how to, I'm going to say dummy down. That's not fair analysis. That that really sounds very, very condescending. And I don't mean that. What I mean is, is I can't write any other way. And what this client said to me, who's very much a visionary, is he said, and he shared it with a couple other military friends who came back with the exact same analysis. And they're so funny too, because they'll be like, 
can we get together and debrief on your book? I'm like, it's <laughs> but they, the military high, the, you know, leaders in the military think a lot of them are, are, are visionaries. I saw that when I was at Butner, the guys that came from the military, you know, I'd say, I think if I'm thinking about the ones that I knew in, in that respect, they were all visionaries. So mm. oh, it's, it's an arena that attracts a lot of visionary thinkers. Right. Yes. So what I recognized is, I mean, in a nutshell, I am a visionary writer. I'm not just visionary because I'm a visionary. I write for visionaries. Now mm. that's why I serve them as clients. But what I recognize too, is I am not for everyone, even in my writing. I mean, people will come back and go, it was a well-written book. I know they're not visionary, not because right. they're not appreciating it enough, but because every single visionary comes back and is like, oh. it's a different, yes. It's a whole different reaction. Yes. And yes. you know what else? They take it and run with it. And this, mm. this guy, Dave, who was kind of my initial rah-rah guy, I mean, he has just been putting me everywhere. I mean, he, like, if you wow. want to feel good, if I ever, if I'm feeling down about myself, I just call Dave. Because <laughs> wow. he's like, you're wow. amazing. You're incredible. Right. Well, but no. the whole point is, is that he took it and created a whole new framework for himself to utilize the teachings. Mm. So they're also, this is what visionaries do. Visionaries take other visionary ideas and they add to it. So when we all get together as a collaborative, we are literally making a village. Mm. I mm. might be envisioning the, the, the church and, and another mm. visionary comes along and goes, Ooh, that church, you know, what needs that? They need a market nearby. So they, they're like, that's my thing. I'm going to, I'm envisioning a market. And this is how, this is maybe we'll just let the people figure out how they connect. <laughs> we'll yes. let the people figure out what paths they want to take between the church and, and, and the market. But the whole point is, is that we will add on each other's visions naturally. Yes. 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 And then that becomes not only, you know, more valuable, but a much more fun thing because as visionaries, we typically create within our own little internal cell. Yeah. And when we get these other cells coming along going, Ooh, I want to get, I have never had so much fun in my life and it's only, it's just by talking about it. So, you know, I, I just feel like there's a lot of, of, of a surge of energy in this collective realm. We're like-minded, whether it's visionary, non-visionary, we're finding our people, we're finding our tribes, we're finding the people we're meant to co-create with in addition to the higher powers. And it's giving us so much traction. Mm. Mm. It's giving so, us so much track, but we have to have the right frame of mind and the right narratives in order to tap into that. So what, what I, what, what, uh, you wouldn't be happy with me saying, no, I'm not going to say it. Okay. I'm not going to say it. No, I would be like, uh, you need to say it. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. I was going to say, okay, let me dumb it down, but no, <laughs> um, no. <laughs> We're not using that language anymore. <laughs> God, no, it's not. It's no, what I, what I'm hearing is, uh, as you, so we, 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 I have to, I have to reverse. I'm going to go back to the, I'm going to go to the beginning when we said, you have to have the intuition. You got to be led by the spirit. You got to be. So when you birth in this, um, you are not. What am I getting feedback all of a sudden? No. Okay. Not anymore. You're not going in the usual way as everybody approaches it. Right. You're going in because the spirit knows. So I'm going to say spirit. The spirit knows that. I know the channel that this should take. That you birthed, in, and if you remember, I think two or three EPs ago, we talked about the way you birth in something, that's the way people will experience it. So the way you birth in it, there's a path to market. But if anywhere between your birth and when there's crowning and, 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 and a show off, Anytime you deviate from the way you're birthing and the, the path that you're, and you know it, you know it, that your spirit, you, 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 when, you, when you start to do it and your spirit says this way, and then the, the other people in their place come and say, no, you should do it that way, and you follow their lead, you would find that it will crash until you go back, you go back and settle your spirit in the way it's supposed to be done and you scrap it all and say you know what spirit lead me 
lead me in this thing that you know how it's supposed to go. Because a lot, we're so unique that not everybody, I'm going to go on a limb and say this. I would say that 89 to 90% of everything that has gone out, the way people have created, have failed because they were looking over the shoulder saying, oh, that's how John did it. Let me do it. Rather than I am unique, I have a new, and I'm going to innovate. You see, God is an innovator. He's a creator. Mm -hmm. So when we are when we are birthing these things and we go and turn and look, I'm not saying don't look and see um, lessons learned. I'm not saying you have to be wise, but the path you were supposed to take, it's already it's already written for you. And once once you deviate from that path, path, you're you're about to hit some real real roadblocks and 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 the real hindrances this time. Mm -hmm. And even if it is successful, it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to be hard. Yes. yes. So if you want to get, if you want ease and flow, I mean, this is this, this these are the principles of of flow theory. You know, you want ease and flow. You have to be operating in your design, and you have to know it's not all up to you. You have to get out of that egoic. I've got to figure it out all by myself. Yes. You know, one of the things I think is really interesting. You're talking about innovation. I read this. Um, yeah, I Carl, read, this is good. Because you're here, Carl. We, we feel your energy. This is a big part of why it's going to be the best show ever. Um, well, go ahead. So one of the statistics I read a couple of weeks ago um, is that, so in the, the current freshman high school class, mm -hmm. by the time they, those of them who are going on through a four-year undergrad program, by the time they mm -hmm. graduate and start to go into the workforce after their first mm -hmm. four, four years of college, 60% yeah. of them will be going into jobs that have not been created yet. Wow. So in eight years, we're going to be like 60%. There are jobs that haven't even been created yet. Yes. They're going to be doing for a living what we haven't even considered yet as a job title. As a, you know, And I'm seeing this a lot as things shift right now, you know, within the workforce and, and needs and, and what people will be putting up with, what people want, what they don't want. You know, and I, I, I collaborated with another uh, resource partner who is a career coach. And we put together my a process I have and a process he has. And we married it. And we just we just are finishing up with our, our first beta test client. And it, it just I just finished my part with her yesterday. And she said, this process with you has been extraordinary as far as me being able to get out of my head and mm -hmm. what is my next job? What is going to look like based on what I know, mm -hmm. based on what I know from the outside world. And what we did was her going in and, and developing and defining and establishing what that needs to be on the inside. So then that way she can take that information and, and, and lay it over his process, which is now let's match make that with what is available on the outside, even if it's Correct. not an actual job, because people are making up job titles all the time. Mm -hmm. It's you can make something up now and go in as a fractional and say, look, I've had enough experience in your realm. And this is something you don't yet even know you need. But I'm a specialist in that. And I can come and bridge that gap in your organization. Yes. And that's what we're looking for, especially visionaries, which she happens to be so that that was a good, that was a good thing too. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, this is, this is what we're talking about. No longer, what do I have the outside world taught? What do I have that the outside world taught me? My learned and earned skills. And how does that match up with what already is going on out here? This is why so many people are leaving the workforce, whether they know it or not. They may be telling themselves a story. I'm doing this because I'm not happy with X. But what's really happening, and it speaks to the looking in, is we're having this awakening of, for so long, and I saw this with the guys at Butner too, like most of them were like, thank God I got incarcerated on some level because I was going down a, a path that wasn't really authentically me, not just in the decisions I was making, because yeah. decisions come from our alignment within self. So if we're not aligned within ourselves, we're not going to be good making good decisions. So mm -hmm. if we want true alignment in our decision making, we need to align with this is my lane. This is my, this is my arena. This mm -hmm. is my zone of brilliance. Yeah. And I own it. And this is where I'm going to deliver from, right? Mm -hmm. Until we do that, we're going to be seeing it, you know, the, the lack of that or the imbalance or the incongruency in that 
in all of these other spaces in our lives, in our decisions, in our relationships, in our yeah. self-happiness and fulfillment, in all of it. And what it really is, is that we haven't defined this for ourselves. We need to stop doing that. We need to start doing it the way that, and that's what this partner and I, you know, he said, he was actually, because he's visionary as well. He was actually the one to say, we need to partner up because I see being in a career coach for so long and I see the trends and I see the changes. Yeah. We need to meet people where they don't even know they are. Yes. 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 They're awakening. Yeah. They're not happy. They're not fulfilled, but they don't know why. They All they know is to do it the way they typically go to the recruiters, go to the you know, the typical career coaches and stuff, and they just plug them into the next thing that isn't fully aligned with them because they don't know the internal questions to ask first to say, maybe what I'm awakening to is I don't want to do it any of that way. I want to mm. learn how to access what's within me that has all those answers. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's, that's innovation though. That's, I, I think copycat copying <laughs> kills innovation. And and sure. until and I think what 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 needs to happen, what the, the 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 shift needs to to be is letting people have know that they have everything that they need to survive. You came you came on Earth with all the tools. You just needed to, you just need to sharpen them for a second, and that's what experience is. But your experiences should not make as you're as you're walking down this path this journey of life when you when you when you hitch up with 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 someone the someone is not there to mislead you but i think is there to reflect a bit who you are and then you you learn from it and you keep on going rather than i i can't fulfilling someone else's dream is great i i'm i'm i love to assist people but I believe in my heart of hearts that as you fulfill someone else's dream, you you should be fulfilling yours. Your dream yes, should absolutely. be a fulfillment of someone else's. Whereas there are people there, there, there in, in, in this place, you have people who would drop their dreams, mm -hmm. drop why they're they're, they're they're placed on earth. And just 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 work in someone and, and and that I think that is called corporate America. That's you, called you, you, that's called martyrdom <laughs> and sacrifice, is what that's called. And for yeah. ages we've been trained that that's being a good, uh, reliable, <laughs> dedicated, loyal, fill in the blank, yeah. husband, wife, why... daughter, son. Ooh, stop. Stop, stop. You're going somewhere now because <laughs> you find yourself at the end of that. And, and, and it's so good you said husband and wife. Because this example, just I think I will, I will, I will just, it will just, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would conclude, <laughs> I would conclude there. It's what we're doing when we are fulfilling someone else's dream and not doing our unique. It's, it's the marriage that you see when someone at the end of it goes. I did not get a thing out of this relationship. Mm. Whereas a relationship, you should come in whole. The other person comes in whole. And when you get together, that makes a whole. It's not 50-50. It's 100% you, 100% me coming in together for us to be 100%, to be one. Uh, and when we come in 50, 75 or whatever, when you're doing for the person, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying be selfish, but you understand me. Uh, you are putting your entire, like she says, or he says, you know, I put my entire dream down for you. You should not have. So, you, you know, it's really interesting up. on that. So my daughter loves all of these like dating shows or married before you get to know each other, or blind marriage or whatever they're called. And we were uh -huh. watching, we were watching one with her the other night and it was, so I was, you know, you know me, like I get real fascinated with the psychology of why people do what they do. So I'm watching this couple on this show and she is just, she is ready. She's that a hundred percent myself. Like I'm bringing a hundred percent to this relationship. And she really uh -huh. stood out because to everyone else, she looked too forward and too bold and too, because she knew herself, she knew what she wanted. So mm -hmm. she, she, she's the second choice of this guy. The uh -huh. first choice person 
was like, no, I'm not interested. I'm interested in someone else. So he's like, oh, and then he's like, all right, well, I want someone. So, but he's a nice guy, oh. right? So he he kind of is like telling himself, he's like, okay, this is, this is meant to be. It means that that person wasn't for me and this person is, uh-huh. not for me and all that. So anyway, they leave, that's, they're dating in these pods. People probably know oh. what you're talking about. Anyway, they're dating these pods. They go out, they go, so they have to marry. They, uh-huh. they it's like blind something they, like they marry, they, they, they propose when they can't see uh-huh. each other, they get to know each other without seeing each other, just hearing each other and talking for like hours and hours for weeks and weeks. Uh-huh. They decide to propose. Well, someone decides to propose usually the guy and they just, they leave the pods as soon as they propose. And then they all go on this honeymoon kind of thing. They're not really technically married, but they're proposed. Uh-huh. They go, they're, they're engaged and then get to know each other in the real world. Well, not really real world. Cause they're on this vacation. Right. But anyway, gotcha. So, gotcha. The girl, and this is there's a point to this. The the girl yeah. that the guy wanted that didn't want him ends up first choice. The first choice ends mm-hmm. up being proposed to by another guy. So they're all together on this group vacation, and they all uh-huh. come together. So he gets to he gets to meet face to face his first choice because you know he didn't see any of these girls. Uh huh. And you see this. So this so, whole thing is unraveling. In the conversations that this couple is having, the girl, the woman, she has to call her a woman because she's totally self-owned. She's like, I'm in this. I want to build this. You are, you, you, I chose you intentionally because, and she could speak directly to the things that they spoke about. And, you know, when they were talking and when that's why she wanted to come into the, but she's like, it's a two-way street. Like, I need to know you're in it too. And because the first night they all met, he like immediately goes over to the first choice and starts chatting it up with the premise that I needed closure. But then he kept going back. She's like, how much closure do you need? Like, you just keep going back. And the whole time I'm sitting here watching this and my my daughter's like, why is he being such a jerk? Why is he doing this to her? And I said, honey, it's because he's not ready. The first choice, the reason it was his first choice and she's much younger and she's much less mature and she doesn't know what she clearly doesn't know what she wants because she doesn't even at that point know she wants to be with the guy who proposed to her that she said yes to there's oh this goodness. confusion and so because they're both confused they're they're a match and yes. so it's not that and that's the problem is that we think that this person is is he has this great woman who's so de- you can totally see she has all i mean she's she's beautiful she's all these things but he's not ready He's a match for the other one that isn't ready. And this is what happens. But why are we like that is because nobody has shown us what a match of equal pillar partnership looks like. Think about every Mm. system in the world. Every system in the world is a reliance-based system. You Mm -mm. need me. We're not coming together because we want to be. We're coming together because we need to be. I mean, think about marriages back in the day. They came together because one could take care of the kids and the other one could make the money. Or one, but they, it was, it was a marriage. I'm not saying that it didn't, there wasn't love and I'm not, but typically what we've been shown, you need the hospital systems because you can't take care of yourself. You need the doctor because you don't know how to take care of yourself. It's a need-based codependency based model that we live in. It's a paradigm that's based on codependency. So how are we supposed to know how, because nobody, do you go to school and learn about how to become more self-aware? Who even teaches that stuff? Growing up, it's all about how to be reliant. Again, in ways we're not conscious, but how do you need to rely on the system? Who do you need to rely on? You know, instead of building this understanding, and I'm not saying do it all ourselves. I'm not saying we have to just rely on ourselves always. I'm saying know what you bring to the table so you know where your partner who's equal in also how they're going to be able to, you know, best support you and you them. But you yes. each know what you're bringing as opposed to, I don't, I don't have it. So I'm going to get it from you. <sighs> right. Which is, which is exactly the way we were raised. So, so I was explaining this to Madison with the show and she was like, oh my gosh, mom, that's like, it so much sense because it doesn't make rationally any sense why this guy's running off from someone yeah. who's so much better in so many ways. Why is he literally sabotaging that? It's because mm-hmm. he's not ready. And this is why you're seeing a lot of people falling out of relationships, whether it's, you know, marriage relationships, friendship relationships, even falling out within their family relationships, because mm-hmm. they're changing and they're wanting more of that person who is 
doing the inner work, doing it, you know, and they're not getting it. And so energetically, they're no longer a match. And it's like those magnets we try to put together. If it's not a match, it's going to push away. And so we're finding people just voting themselves off our island. We're finding wow. friends just going away. And, and then when we stop and think of it, my daughter said this the other day, she's like, you know, so-and-so is no, not texting me anymore. And I'm like, is that a bad thing? She's like, actually, no, we're kind of moving apart. Like we're not, we're not in the same friend circles. We don't want the same thing. We don't do the same thing. So we're starting to see this shift away from need based because I, we're, we've been friends for 14 years. We have to stay friends mm -hmm. or because we've been married yeah. for 14 years. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like there's a sanctity to marriage. But what I'm saying is, is that if you, if there's also a sanctity to what you've spent your entire life doing as a career. But if you find all of a sudden it's not aligned with the person that you were designed to be, yeah, you want to actually think about that. Yes. And that's yes. what people are doing right now. Yeah. yeah. Right. So yeah. there's a lot, there's a lot coming open so we can become, we've been talking about authenticity. When did authenticity become a buzzword? Like 20 years ago? We are finally stepping into what that means. Mm, 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 mm. You know, uh, so Carl, while you were going on, you know, Carl had a couple of things to say. You know, I would rather be alone than married wrong. <laughs> uh, he went on to say, we choose with our eyes instead of our hearts. I think that's uh, so true. And then lastly, people come into relationships thinking that the other person is their happiness partner when you should learn to be happy before you meet someone. That's hey. it. Who you yes. are before you meet somebody. But that was interesting about this experiment. People didn't uh -huh. use their eyes to choose because they couldn't see each Correct. other. And Correct. this is the other thing about marriage. We might enter into a marriage because we are at a certain stage in our lives and then we evolve to another stage. You know, if, if that other person doesn't evolve to still be a match, then we're really literally killing ourselves and them because this is the other thing when we live someone's life, when we live someone else, else's life, they're not able to be authentic either because we're there filling in the blanks that they really need to figure out for themselves. Ooh, la, 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 la. This is, this is, where, so this is what we put in studio. We call it. The, the, dark. the dark studio. <laughs> But no, uh, if you're if you're on if you're on, look, listen. This is this is happening live. Electricity's gone. My backup battery's gone. My my oh, see, she came back on, <laughs> but she's gonna go up in a second. Uh, the computer battery says, "Warwin, guess what? You're on battery saver mode. You have roughly." 15 more minutes to go so we have maybe nine more minutes on this and hopefully we'll see so you know, it's interesting show, if i look at my clock we have nine more minutes to the show if this show ends before i play the music and all that good stuff hey understand what went down literally <laughs> but no we've the been, grid. we've been we've been talking about a couple of things it started with as soon as the show started um boom that my 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 fateful secondary that I planned and said, you know, if electricity isn't here, I'm going to do it. It went boom. Second thing we started and we decided, we chose to say, this is going to be the best show ever. And it has become a one. So please hit replay uh, as we, as we wind down. But Tracy, what's, what's been going on in your world in terms of, because the reason I'm asking this question is because every time we do this show, someone comes. Um, oh my goodness! Here's Carl. Okay, Carl. Right. What happens if people don't evolve together? <laughs> you know, Carl. My dad. When I was fifteen, I think I've told this this story before, but it speaks directly to that question. When I was fifteen, my parents were starting to have some issues, and I think they both kind of saw that things were going to be going in a different direction. And and you know, he, my father was just talking to me about I don't remember it was something different, but he said it got on the topic of relationships, and he said, you know, Trace, in life, the best you can hope for because you both will grow and evolve is that you grow and evolve in a similar direction. Because if you don't, then there usually comes a time where you have to decide, do I sacrifice my growth and happiness? Wow. Wow. Or do I recognize that and 
you know, we don't have to, what I love, somebody used this, this, this term the other, well, not the other day, it was a little while ago, but when you talk about conscious decoupling mm. and the idea of we just shift roles, you're not leaving my life unless I choose to, because I think a lot of people think that in order to divorce, they have to be fighting or they have to hate each other or they have to create, there has to be a reason other than we're just evolving in a different direction. Like that doesn't seem good enough because those are also expectations of our culture or our religion or, you know, whatever. And, mm -hmm. and, and so are we living for those things or are we living for our authenticity and alignment? Because, mm -hmm. you know, if that happens to me, then you better believe just like our intention here was to have the best show ever that is to evolve into a role that is the best one ever for that next stage we're in. And maybe it's not husband and wife, maybe it's best friend and best friend. But it, the whole point is how can I retain this person who I still value, but just in moving in a different direction from? Mm. Because again, that codependency means that we, everywhere we go, that person must be there because without them, I'm not complete. Oh, not complete, yeah. Yep. Non-codependency, pillar, strong pillar, strong pillar, 100%, 100%, let's just call it that runs off of an entirely different paradigm. That is if we all, if we both are not aligned in this and constant communication to know that, then we owe one another and ourselves the opportunity mm. to shift roles. Mm. And I see this in companies all the time where half the time, it's not that there's the wrong people in the organization. They're just in the wrong seats. They have the wrong role, the wrong title. And as soon as you put them in their right seat, they, they thrive within the organization. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And so it's really about that, but we put certain conditions on things like marriage. No, it doesn't operate that way. Uh, I'm sorry. The way we do one thing is the way we do everything. It all operates that way. It's our mm -hmm. mindset needs to. Now, the most important thing to me is not what I call this person in my life. It's how I love them. Mm -hmm. And if I can't love them as their wife or as their whatever, then I'm going to, I owe it to me and them to shift to a different role so I can continue to love them in the right way. Yeah. yeah. So I just don't think we oftentimes look at it that way. We, we give it that, that black and white determination and we're like, yeah, this fits or it doesn't. And who we're hurting most is not just ourselves. It's the other people we hold within that vision of how it needs to be. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You know, um, I think that was dessert. I think I'm just going to tell you what is in a quick second and now we'll go into a wrap up. I, I, that question, Carl, about, you know, who, who do I suck? What happens if people don't evolve together? Uh, I, my, my viewpoint, and I'll be short because we have roughly four is when we, when we start the journey, so I did, I did a, a, a case study in B school. It was the Sherpas speaking to the individuals who went to climb Mount Everest. Uh, they said, let's plan every single thing, not every single thing, but let's plan this trip, this trip during this trip. At any time, if you feel like you can't go to the next level, Go to, go to base camp. If you can't go to base camp and you feel you can go, uh, keep going. But if you have to stop, we'll leave one person with you. If you get missing, here's where you go. I mean, they planned, they planned every single, every major thing. And during, why did they come to this? Prior, they never did that. And you had a lot of people getting missing on the road on this trip up the mountain, um, up this, on this trip to, to marriage, on this trip up to keeping your marriage. You have, when the plan was made, you would find that the individuals who were climbing would follow what the plan was. And I say this in order for, it's not, not, not a hundred percent success rate, but in order for you to have a high percentage, I believe it's important to engage with a plan saying that you know we might just change on this on this on this on this path love isn't enough love is good uh, but i think friendship 
and understanding each other where we are is important. Because I tell you, I'm 23, 23 years in marriage now. And I can look at the moments where we could have gone separate ways. We, I mean, we could have gone separate ways in a, in a heartbeat. But because in the beginning we said, you know what? Divorce is not an option in this thing. We will find a solution. We will always find a solution to it. And I tell you, because of that base, the Sherpa telling us, hey, get a plan. <laughs> in this walk now, when it comes up, we look at each other. And the very first thing we say is, you know, divorce is not an option. Oh, yeah, no, nah, it's not an option. And it's not even based on, it's not the, 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 the issues is not, the issues are not uh, adultery or it's, it's just any, any, any conversation that we're having and we find it, it's kind of rocky. We'll go, you know, this thing is divorce is not an option, right? And we're laughing and say, oh, no, it's not. And we continue and we always get back on the road, always get back on the road. Mm -hmm. um, so evolving people, talk about it, right? Understand, understand that we, we are always changing. Mm -hmm. The Tracy today is not the Tracy 20 years ago. Oh my goodness. The wall went today is not the wall went 20 years ago. And if we can, we can grace each other with allowing change to occur, then hey, kudos. So I Tracy, love that. I Tracy, love that. Have, Tracy, you're taking us home. You're taking us home. We have one more minute. You you take us home. I'm not talking again. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, you know, to take us home, I just want to honor what you just said because I think we're both saying the same thing from different perspectives, which is what brings so much value, I think, to the table mm -hmm. of any discussion is is and it is the stories we tell right it's like if we say you know what i want is this experience of if i'm going to go into marriage you know like stay with this person literally till death do us part is the plan mm -hmm. and so our minds are going to go looking for the solutions to 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 you know sync up with the plan if 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 our story is i want to be free to constantly recreate and choose a different reality for myself. I don't want to be boxed in by any conceptual well, understanding yeah. of, yeah. of, of what I'm supposed to be doing or, or aligning myself to. I really kind of want to just be open and experience as I go through life. Mm -hmm. Then our brains will go looking for the solutions and, and create the narratives to line up with that. So the whole thing is, is that we choose the reality we want to experience and honoring one another's differences in that are mm -hmm. so important. It doesn't make one right and one wrong. If somebody else brings up a good point that counters our point, it doesn't mean we were wrong. It just means we have chosen different experiences in this life and mm -hmm. how we want to experience that. And mm -hmm. that's the beauty of the diversity on this planet is is we if we if we find and, and this is what i found in the last couple of weeks is just remember when you're hitting a rough patch it's giving you an opportunity to go in and decide what your plan is right or get reconnected to that plan what is that plan what is the non-negotiable right in other words non-negotiable is like i'm gonna know that i have choice at all times i am free it doesn't matter what uh, paradigm I live in, you know, what reality I live in, what country I live in, what structure, what system. I want to feel I'm free to co-create with the powers that be. That's going to be my plan, right? And I'm going to design all of the things that I choose in my life and, and what I say yes to and what I say no to based on that, <laughs> right? And that, that's a life. That's a life. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. You made it. It's been it's been a it's been a dark one. <laughs> but in light, dark but it was, you can be in the dark and still be in light. Yes, yeah. So thank you for being with us. For those of you who replay, uh, please replay and comment on it and we'll come back and comment. Uh, we're on YouTube, we're on Facebook. Spotify for replays, a couple of different places. Uh, please, 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 please share with others. And we look forward to two weeks to talk to you. Take care.
Thank you.